if you are running TikTok ads right now, because obviously that space is doing very well and you need to track the web events using the API, then this video is gonna show you how you can quickly set that up actually using Zapier. So you don't need to use too much custom code. And as a non-technical person, you could actually set this up just using Zapier as opposed to having to hire a coding freelancer, for example, or a contractor, and they are creating something that you're not gonna be able to manage yourself. I was recently helping a client with this, and this is what inspired the video because I figured other people are probably experiencing this as well, especially with how popular TikTok ads have become. And you can see here, how we solve this is with a very simple zap, just two steps with a Zapier webhook and then a Zapier webhook again. If you've seen my other Zapier webhook videos, you know that if you use a Zapier webhook beyond the first step, beyond the trigger, you can actually make HTTP requests. It's like sending information to wherever you want, however you want, basically. Don't worry, I will give you a bit of a walkthrough of what this looks like, but all we need to do is we need to make sure that we have the access token for our pixel. So if we come over to the events manager in uh, TikTok, well, the ads manager, and you go to assets, you go to events, this is what screen you're gonna see. You're gonna go web events. I've already created a pixel. Obviously, you will need to create a pixel yourself. You're just gonna choose, it will ask you if you wanna do things automatically or manually. You just say that you're gonna do it manual and you're gonna be sending web events. It will all make sense as you go through the creation process. You're gonna click on the pixel you just created. Then we wanna make sure we go over to the settings. Once we're in the settings, we're gonna scroll to the bottom and you can see events API. You're gonna say access token generation. You're just gonna click generate access token. It will give you a value and we're gonna use that in our Zapier webhook step. So I'm gonna jump back to Zapier now. And you can see here, the first step is super simple. It's a Zapier webhook. Obviously this will depend on how the information is getting into Zapier. Maybe it's a purchase event in Shopify. Maybe it's a purchase event in big commerce. It really depends how you're doing this. Maybe it's an opt-in via a, a web page builder that you have. There's lots of different options. Obviously I can't solve everyone, but in this case we were starting it with a webhook. And then the next step is gonna be your Zapier webhook again. And we're gonna go with a webhook a custom request. The custom request is very important because we need to structure the data in a very specific way that the normal Zapier webhooks don't let you do. We're gonna make it post. We're gonna use this URL. In this case, you wouldn't include this test event code. I've just done that there because I can make sure things were working when I was setting up the pixel on the other side. And then the data is gonna look like this. So we get given this structure. When you complete setting up the pixel, it will actually give you an example of this data. So you can copy paste that into here. And in this case, you're gonna have fill out just a handful of fields. You just need to fill out timestamp. Callback is actually gonna be your TikTok uh, click ID. That's obviously very important to track people across the different spaces when they're following your ads. The page URL, not all of these fields are required then you're gonna say the URL, user agent, properties are things like, was it a purchase value, was it a product, things like that. And remember the access token that we just got in the previous step. We're gonna make sure to include that at the bottom. So we're gonna make sure our headers are saying content type and access token, we add that access token. And this is really all there is to it, but there aren't very many required fields. And I'm gonna include a link in the description as well that took me ages to find. And I don't know, where this came from, but it's very hard to find the things on the TikTok website sometimes. And this one really nicely lays out what fields we can include and what fields we don't need to include in the, the API call that we're making here. So you can see here, access token is required, content type is required, pixel code, event, event ID, timestamp, context, and then scrolls down, it tells you what all these things need to be. So this was a really great document that I came across. I'm gonna leave that link to that in the description. If you found this video useful, then I'd obviously appreciate a like and a subscribe because I'm gonna put out more of these bite-sized tutorials to help you, whether it's in the online business space or if you're a business owner wanting to automate your internal things. But if you don't wanna do this yourself, then you can obviously reach out to me. If you are running TikTok ads right now and you need to make sure you are doing your attribution correctly, you wanna make sure you've set up your various integrations correctly to make sure you get the most bang out of buck for your TikTok ads, then you can also reach out to me. You can find a link in the description. You can just send me a message and I can see how I could potentially help you make sure your funnels are set up correctly and you actually are getting the most out of your TikTok ads and you can make more money for your business, obviously.